All right, welcome to another episode of Five Games, Five Minutes from aconelectron.co.uk. Spy Cat is a large graphic adventure game, and it's subtitled An Interactive Expose of MI4 and a Half. The game is loosely based around the 1987 book Spy Catcher, which was an expose of MI5. You play a disillusioned spy who has decided to collect three damning reports commissioned by the Thatcher government and smuggle them to Greenland. This is a really colourful adventure game which is small enough to be navigable and tricky enough to be challenging. There are patrolling robots to avoid and a plethora of objects to collect and utilise, not to mention special guest appearances by the Prime Minister and some James Bond style characters. The beating heart energy is also a nice touch. However, you would expect that you would use control keys to enter the doors and to pick up and use objects. Instead you use an icon system which is at the top of the screen. It's controlled with the cursor keys and the space bar. Although this doesn't spoil the game, it's clumsy and not necessary. As long as you like exploration and you've got the patience to wait for all those robots to get out of your way rather than just charging into them and losing energy, Spycatcher is quite a challenging game. Vegas Jackpot is a budget game from Mastertronic and it presents a fairly amiable one-armed bandit. With each press of the return key, the reels spin and you can dream of riches beyond your wildest dreams. Or three pounds, in fact, because that's the maximum it's going to pay out if you get three bar symbols. Although Vegas Jackpot looks like it would be an incredibly simple implementation, it does include a gamble slash collect chain, plus the ability to hold and nudge reels, so it's by no means a poor relation at all. And it's the only fruit machine simulator done in a high definition mode. That means it's colourful dare I also say that it's actually really quite addictive. Naturally enough, it does join an entire shelf full of other fruit machine simulators. Vegas Jackpot has some mysterious draw factor about it. It could be that it's just the timeless quality about it that I love. In Search of Atahualpa is a remarkable semi-professional text adventure. In it, you play an unlikely hero in the form of an official from the National Geographic Society. You have to navigate your way from Spain to the Amazon rainforests and then through the jungle. The aim is to recover a gold statue of the Inca god. You start off with a seemingly simple quest to find a book and enter into a hot air balloon. If you succeed in making it, you then find yourself confined to the balloon's basket dealing with all manner of adversaries and finally crash landing in the mountains. You make progress with the usual north, south, east, west commands and it's a good idea to search and examine every new location you find. In one, you even need to search the floor. Considering this was a bedroom release, the level of research that obviously went into putting it together is incredibly surprising. It's logical, bug-free and immensely playable. Welcome to Smash and Grab. This is an early platform game by Walt Manzel in which you play a robber. You're trying to outwit a policeman, flying traffic cones and some bouncing dustbin lids. The idea is to collect eight swag bags and then you will progress to a new sheet. If the traffic light at the top of the screen is on green, then contact with the policeman is fatal, but if you kick a flashing police box, you become invulnerable to him for a short time. This is handy, because said policeman is a bit of a sneaky bastard and he can use his truncheon to reach platforms both above his head and below his feet so be on your guard whenever he's anywhere near you. This game is tough, and for some reason it's not particularly exciting. The platforms often feel sort of sticky, and your robber can get trapped in corners with no way out. It's colourful and nicely animated, which means I don't really understand why I don't really think it's worth playing. By all means have a try. It might just be me. Tarzan The name conjures up the famous war cry the colours of the jungle vines, and the animalistic protagonist raised by apes. So you may indeed wonder why we've got a basic looking, dull, monochrome graphic adventure here. Why indeed? The instructions aren't going to help you, because they were written for a different version of the game. All I can glean from them is that you need to collect objects, shown as squares, and find seven gemstones, also shown as squares. Ho hum. Tarzan is so palpably bad that you're often dead having traversed little more than 10 screens. Where's that buzzer again? I can't buzz this game enough. The game controls don't work as they should. Arrows and nasties appear randomly in front of you and 
unless you're going to start putting a magnifying glass in front of the screen, you're also more likely than not to actually miss the objects you're meant to collect. Exits are just as hard to see too. As you might have guessed, nothing to recommend here. Probably one of the worst games for the Electron ever written. 